Now listen, listen, you gotta get on that plane right now. I don't know, I don't, don't really like planes. Listen, the, the Congressional, they're coming right around the corner. They're gonna be here any minute. Yeah, but like my brother, he's like blind and stuff. I can't like leave without him and things. Listen, if you don't get on that plane, it's not gonna matter. You're gonna be behind bars, You're behind bars for life. Oh, well, I've, I've had worse. I've been like in combat and stuff. You know, you, you ever want to go back to the field? Is that a, is that a, is, uh, a future wish of yours? Maybe. I mean, like, you know, because I could, like, like fight people and stuff. Well, you're not going to get any of that if you don't get on that plane right now. Now listen, you're going to get on there, take this take this suitcase with you. All right, I'll catch you later, babe. Don't call me babe. You know when I pick a movie, that's when I'm on to pressure. Question always come back to me. What were they thinking now? Oh, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Welcome, welcome, hey. welcome, 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 welcome. What was that? I said, hey. Oh, I thought you said lady. <laughs> hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. And whatnot there. Uh, we are the Jerry Lewis podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I'm Brendan. I'm Nathan. And boy, oh boy, do we have a movie for you this oh, week. Boy, howdy, do we. Uh, but Nathan, we are not alone. No, because this is the kind of movie that you invite friends over to watch. Well, exactly. you get drunk and watch it. <laughs> so, not only are we here, but we have a very special guest. <clears throat> she is a Maverick Pro Wrestling Women's Champion, former WWE superstar, a former two-time uh, Impact Wrestling Knockouts Champion, former Knockouts Tag Team Champion. She is an actress, 1996 Jamaican bobsled silver medalist. And not only is she the president of the Barbed Wire fan club, but she's also a client. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Katarina Waters. OMG. I like that, first of all, you led with Maverick Pro. Like, that was the most important promotion I've ever worked for. And you got your facts wrong because I am, unfortunately, no longer the champion. Aww. Well, you know what, Kat, Kat? You need to get someone to update that Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> because it I still <laughs> it still says current. Okay, I, well I'm working on I'm working on getting my title back, so you know, maybe <laughs> not delete it just yet. Just in case. <laughs> well, you got to delete it because then you can put two time. Right? That's true. That's there true. You go. I just figured I'd put it right at the top because I thought it was current, but I have right. been once again defrauded by Wikipedia. You've been defrauded, yes. I'm sorry. But... <laughs> Such an odd occurrence. I didn't want to be. I didn't, ever I'm sorry to lead with that. I didn't mean to be negative or anything. <laughs> no, no. I just, I just think the last time we spoke was for Wrestling uh -huh. News World, and I had to top the long introduction I gave you there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, welcome. Thank you very much well, for joining you. us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is awesome. So. Um, mm -hmm. Right off the bat, we should note that this is a movie that you adore. I adore it. I love it. I've seen it several times. Would you, uh, Ballpark, how many times do you think you've seen it? Uh, about five, I would say. Okay. I was waiting for, like, uh, 62. No, well, no, no. I have other films that I've seen, like, 20 times, but this one maybe five or six. Okay. I thought but I did rewatch gonna... it the other night, specifically for this podcast, and I have to say... <laughs> I was not even at all bored having seen it several times before. <laughs> Time went by quickly. <laughs> Time did not and stand still. And I liked it just as much as I ever did. I was I was kind of hoping this was going to be your Mad Max Fury Road because I've seen that movie like 30 times. Oh, I can't stand it. <laughs> oh. See, that, that movie I was bored watching. I mean, I would have liked to have been at home so that I could just, you know, have it on the screen with some nice music playing. Throw because it looks beautiful. We're fighting. But not necessary to, like, sit through and watch. As, as it's it a pod fight. Pod <laughs> fight. <laughs> Loosen it well, up right now for this. Nathan, I'd say you're at a disadvantage. She's been fighting a lot longer than you have. <laughs> you know what? I could just come out of nowhere like an RKO. Boom. So, barbed wire. 
1996, starring Pamela Anderson. Star- yeah, <laughs> Pamela wow. Anderson Lee. See, I thought I, I had in my notes Meryl Streep again. Wikipedia. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that would have been an wrong. interesting film. <laughs> that whole opening dance scene would have been oh, so no. more interesting. You know what? Still be into it. Well, it's a good movie. That's why. <laughs> Meryl Streep would just be. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Pamela Anderson. I was going to say, uh, I was going to start saying Playboy, Playboy Playmate slash from Baywatch. Uh, right. I think those are the movies. These, that, that was the stuff she had done at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, this was like her first big starring role. Proud yes. Canadian Pamela Anderson Lee. Darn tootin'. Right. But yes, barbed wire. So right off the bat, mm-hmm. um, yes. let's talk about how popular this movie was at the time, which is uh, no matter whether you like it or not, not very. No, uh, I agree. Because it cost $9 million to make, and it made in the box office $3.8 million. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, you know what? I think it was in a difficult spot because you, here you have a movie that men want to see, but they can't very well tell their girlfriends, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, then they I, got the wrong even girlfriends. Though, even though, once you see it, as a woman, I'm actually also going to spend this episode proving to you that this is actually a, quite a feminist movie. All right. So, if you, as a woman, would engage yourself to go and see it with an open mind, you would quite possibly very much enjoy it and find it empowering. This is going to be a very unique episode, folks. Hey, well, I watched it with my wife, so... <laughs> well, good... Uh, did she like it? Yeah, she enjoyed it. Good. Uh, old Boy, the remake. The, because the remake. Because it's awful. But it's just, it's not funny awful, it's just awful. Yeah, it, it is pretty you know awful. You know what I mean? And I didn't want to have to sit through it again. <laughs> That's to be able fair. To talk about it. I, I, get a, I get a message a couple weeks for it. You know what? Let's just switch back to barbed wire. <laughs> right, because also I would like to, you know, people know about Old Boy and they know about the remake and they know it's bad, but barbed wire people don't have so much of an understanding or consciousness of it. So I want people to know about it and perhaps be inspired to go watch it and it could enrich their lives. There you go. I, this podcast is all about enriching people's lives. I think right. it's it's one of those movies that kind of, um, if you saw it originally and had a mm-hmm. hard stance against it, it's mm-hmm. one of those movies that kind of would have softened you for you over the time because watching it, I... I did enjoy watching it. I'm not going to lie. It was right. maybe I I had a good time watching it just because it was so off the wall, but I can see 96 me being like, mm-hmm. "Oh, this is this is just terrible." But now I was like, "This is great because this happened last year." <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys don't remember when this went down last year at right. Steel Harbor? That's because second American Civil War. Well, I mean, guys, it's it not could too happen. Far. It's, it's not, not too far off. off. We're on our way. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> because this movie starts out by explaining to us that in the futuristic world of 2017, um, there is a there is a sort of a government uh, force named the Congressional Directorate, mm-hmm. which right. is a mouthful. Um, Mm-hmm. And you the said whole. It well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I had trouble with Pamela Anderson Lee, not Congressional Directorate, though. Uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the entire country, the United States, mm-hmm. is under uh, martial law, mm-hmm. except for this one little island known as Steel Harbor. It's the last free city, and is a but is a place marked by chaos and crime, providing a home for a new kind of mercenary. That I will say right off the bat, there is a lot of information they throw at you. Mm-hmm. They really front load the movie with all this like backstory. Well, they have uh, to because it is based on a comic. Yeah, and, and also, don't... by the way, just in case you hadn't picked up on that, it is a remake of Casablanca. Yes. Oh, oh, we, oh, yes. Yes. We are, I found that out. I okay. on Wikipedia, right? <laughs> I no. forgot you're the king of Wikipedia. Fuck Wikipedia, <laughs> liars. <laughs> No, I, uh, well, the, actually, the first time I watched this was not for mm-hmm. this podcast. I watched it another time. And yeah. I noticed, like, certain scenes, like, this really sounds familiar. Right. <laughs> and I, I did look it up after, and I was like, oh, my God, it's Casablanca. <laughs> yes. It well, it's the is... same story. I mean, it's not yeah. the same script, but it's the same story. Just see be... Humphrey Bogart, obviously. Wouldn't it be great if it was the exact same script? 
<laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I mean, Play it again. He's a woman, and Humphrey Bogart is a man. I mean, Humphrey Bogart with boobs. So, in that yeah. case, would the would the band be like like the the, the Sam in this situation? There you go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Play uh, since it was like a punk band. Be like, play it again, snot heads. Play, <laughs> play, burn the city to the ground. Right, they they missed the boat on that one. <laughs> they didn't put that reference in. That might be like the only criticism that one could have. <laughs> <laughs> that's her only criticism, guys. Take it now because that's the end of it. That's it. But we start off this movie by giving, as uh, as you said earlier, the, the the male audience exactly what they want right off the oh, bat. Oh man, more mm-hmm. fan service than an air conditioning repairman. Because <laughs> there's dancing, there's, she's she's dancing on a stage. There's water going everywhere, and then you see they kind of peel back the curtain a little bit, and you see that it's these like employees just shooting water. <laughs> nice the job hose. if you can get it. <laughs> I, I don't know though, like strip club water hoses. I don't know how sanitary that is. <laughs> well, it's like flash downs, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but she wasn't. Was she in a strip club though? I don't think so. Like, no, but it's the same like. kind of thing. Oh yeah, for sure. I just, I'm just worried. About, I'm worried for everyone's health. <laughs> right. I understand. I understand. But it added to the, you know, the ambiance. I'm oh, sure for you sure. agree. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, the ambiance is what I was paying the most attention to. <laughs> Throughout the movie, though, I'm sure you both noticed, I'm sure we all noticed, this movie is rated R, mm-hmm. but they don't really, there's not like the, there's violence, but it's kind of right. like, it's kind of sanitary violence. Like it's, to, it's a little yes. toned down. It's, mm-hmm. there's no real cursing. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing is that they kind of show her boobs a few times. It's very right. quick, though. Yeah, true. Sure. It's like, in the opening, it's like a very quick shots. There's mm-hmm. a shot later where she's just kind of walking away and she's like closing up her house coat or whatever. And I'm just like wondering if they did that less in your face because they knew they wanted to get like the female audience too. I don't know. Probably. But I mean, it also, it was 96. If you hadn't seen Pam Anderson naked by then. You hadn't opened a book. Right. <laughs> if you're going to see the, no, all kidding aside, if you were going to see this movie, a guy who might have been going to see it is not going because they're going to go to stare at Pamela Anderson's boobs for an hour and a half. They're mm. going to go because I might catch a glimpse of them, but this also does look like kind of a, a fun kick-ass action movie. Right. Yeah. You know? Agreed. Because anybody, any guy who's going to go for that has already seen the Playboy issues. And there's, mm-hmm. nothing, there's nothing new there. For a second, I thought you were going to say any guy who has already seen the play. <laughs> the play, yes. <laughs> the West End production didn't do it so well. I I hear that's how Tilda Swinton got started. <laughs> Broadway. Let's do Babe, Wa- Bar- Babe Wire. Oh, don't say that, Brennan. Let's do Barb Wire on Broadway. It might work. Barb Wire the As musical. a musical. Hey, they yeah. did a Showgirls right. musical, so. <laughs> they tried. No. Yeah. It could actually be good. There you go. Yeah, I don't know, but you're right. It is actually quite tame if you think about it. It is. Like, I think it's if you took like out... not like a huge amount of, like, really gory. No. I think if you yeah. took out the flashes of nudity, I think it would be a PG-13. Pro- yeah, probably. Which is, like, I wonder if that was, like, a last-minute addition, too. Like, oh, oh, we forgot that she needs to be naked at some point. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Now, well, do I'm you think say that... I that wasn't so much an afterthought. Do you think then if, if that true. was the case, if they had edited that out and managed to get a PG or a PG-13 rating, do you think the movie would have done any better in box office? Worse. No. A hundred so. times worse. <laughs> yeah. If, because if a guy saw that barbed wire was rated PG-13 and saw the poster, he'd be like, not interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, but during this dance, well, we have not talked about any of this movie. <laughs> Um, but during this dance, she, uh, at first you think, okay, she's like a, she's like a, a dancer, stripper, whatever. Right, yes. Um, but <laughs> this guy is like cat calling her from the, yeah. uh, from the stands. Uh, everybody loves that, right? That's always a good thing. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, but one thing he says, it doesn't make her happy. Mm. He calls her babe. And she throws <laughs> her heel 
at his forehead. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> Which I thought at first that she killed him. Me too. <laughs> and then well, as they're... no, I think because as, as no, they pick him up and he's like, oh, what happened? Yeah, he's like still conscious. No, Is I'm he... pretty. Sh- I think he lives. I thought he was dead. He falls over at his chin, and they like drag him out. Yeah, but as they're dragging him out, he's still moving around, and he's just Is like, he? whoa. Yeah. Huh. I'll have to rewatch it. Oh darn. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Wait, we'll we'll give you we'll give you an hour and a half. Go ahead. And we're back. <laughs> so you see, he's still alive. I have to re-rent it. There you go. Um, Tell me, and you're not telling me you don't own it on like Blu-ray or DVD. No. It seems like I the should. situation there it would pay for itself. Right, I should, but I don't have a DVD player, anyways. Oh, there you go. You can you can get it digitally. Yeah, it's much easier. Yeah, I mean, I have like a, I have like a disc drive and stuff, you know, but I don't like have like a proper. I don't have like an entertainment system. This has been technology talk with Katarina Waters. <laughs> <laughs> I watch everything on my phone. How's that? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're like Avatar, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that at the movie theater. Very well. That's good. <laughs> let's not talk about Avatar. It's a long conversation. <laughs> that's true. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's get back. Let's get let's back to Barbara. Yes. Yes. We're, um, the reason anyway, why. Yes. Yes. She's at the 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 strip club. Is that mm-hmm. we find out that they're running human trafficking mm-hmm. out of the place, and yes. she's yes. there to help break uh, an, an unfortunate girl out. Yes. yes. We also get a weird uh, kind of gross guy moment where. Uh, there's one of the guys is watching and the owner of the club comes over and he's just like, yeah, you like my new girl. I haven't had a chance to figure her out yet. And when he's doing that, he like moves his finger around. It's gross. <laughs> right. That was gross. Right. Because the dude wants to buy her. Yeah. yeah. And the other guy wants to do something else. <laughs> Did right. you understand the part? Okay. So then she goes into the back and there's two other uh-huh. dancers there. Right. Uh huh. And there's, like, a Chinese girl there. Yes. She speaks in French. Yes. Right. And barbed wire is confused, and then someone says, oh, she's Chinese. I, what's yes. The, I don't, what's the joke That's there? That's the joke. The joke is that the girl is, like, she looks Chinese, but she's talking French. Pamela Anderson can't understand what she's saying, so she says, come again. And the other girl says, she's Chinese, because she thinks she's talking Chinese, because she looks Chinese. But in real okay, life, that's what she's I... talking French. That's what I thought it was, but I was just yeah. like, wow. This is <laughs> not bad. A... Brendan, uh, one it's time... It's a bit highbrow, perhaps. That's why it's probably very bizarre. It's not, you know, In a related it's story... It's not for the average viewer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was, I was watching uh, Tokyo Drift with uh, my kids, and my youngest one lamented, oh, they speak French in Japan, while all the people are speaking Japanese. <laughs> Same idea. Unaware that it's a completely different language. That's the it. Joke. Must it, it 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 must have went way over my head, cat. You you're right. Interesting. <laughs> no, that's what I thought the joke was. But then I was right. like, well, no, that's there's gonna. I thought there was something else to it. <laughs> I, was, I didn't know it was just like that's that dancer thinks that Chinese no, is the same language. No, but that's why. But that's why Barb White is like a double take because uh, she, she realizes it's French because she's obviously much smarter than the other girl. So she busts this girl out uh, uh, of human trafficking. Using a blow and, dart cigarette. Yeah, after she uses the blow dart cigarette on her, on her, uh, well, on the boss of the owner of the building. Brilliant. <laughs> Got a light. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Yeah. Right. Um, she makes a Batman reference. Yes. <laughs> you ever seen Batman? In, I in... do like a zip tie. What's it called? Zip lock, uh, zip tie. Uh, grappling. Zip, zip line. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gra- yeah. the grapple the grappler from uh, Batman, which it's funny to me. Like this movie came out in '96, so there would have been a Batman movie like the year before, but it, it takes place terrible. in tw- it takes oh yeah, it's bad, but it takes place in 2017. So it's like if you're going by the movie's logic, she's just asking if she's just seen a movie that's like probably as old as that girl. <laughs> Why they're still making Batman movies? <gasps> no, but I'm saying like in the world of the movie, it was just like Batman Forever in like 1995. But so it when wasn't she asked, 1995, her, it's 2017. Yeah, but you don't know what kind of Batman movies they've made since then. Batman always has that thing. For exactly. me, Batman ended with Batman Forever. 
Well, no one, nothing ever tops. It's just you, Val <laughs> Kilmer. Brendan, there's this chap named Christopher Nolan. You should check Never out some of his him. work. He's a young that upstart. Sounds, so sounds, okay, not yeah. to not to cause controversy here, but I Uh-oh. also I'm not a huge fan of the Christopher Nolan ones. But one of my favorite movie of movies of all time is Batman Returns. That's fair. I like Batman yeah, Returns. That's okay. I'm okay with that. The cool. first part, however, will have to have not work. okay at all. Okay, we can have a fight about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is ter- again, it's a pod fight. So Brian's right. gonna take the side of Christopher Nolan. I'm gonna take the side of Mad Max Fury Road. It's gonna be a three way dance, baby. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Getting the references in. Yeah. Did you think that when she ret- so she returns the girl to her parents, uh, mm-hmm. barbed wire? Did you think that the parents had weird ulterior motives at first? Yeah, they looked iffy especially dad yeah he has this like oh well it's just like when she returns him the way he has is like his briefcase up and he's just like thank you for returning our daughter (laughs) it it came across to me more like they were the couple that got outbid for her yeah Mm. oh maybe yeah but i don't think that that's the case no i think the girl would have said something about that I think it was yes. just weird. Right. I, think it, I think it was just weird acting choices, but mm-hmm. like that's how it sounded to me. I was like, "Oh, are they like? Did they just win like the trafficking lottery or something?" <laughs> she gets a pretty sweet car out of the deal, though. She does get a pretty sweet car out of it. Smash! Car- and I think, and I think oh, that scene. I think the important thing about that scene was to show that even though she saved a little girl, she's still tough because she's ready to like slice her in half she does get her money true yes even though she probably actually wouldn't do that but just you know like the it's not like a sentimental moment where they go oh we don't have it and she's like oh that's okay you know <laughs> she's like no i'll slice your little daughter in half Fine, I'm gonna King so it's just her. like yeah it's just like showing you know it's like showing her character like she's tough no matter what the circumstances she's tough as barbed wire right <laughs> um <laughs> smash cut to uh yeah. electrocution torture uh-huh um yeah so they have a device on this girl and like that that she looks like a sexy borg <laughs> from star trek <laughs> well i just wrote like is he's electrocuting two specific parts mm-hmm. ouch right can you imagine like the girl being the girl that auditioned for that per- that specific role? <laughs> just so we're gonna put this on you, and oh, you just <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna pay me, right? Okay, I'm gonna be able to eat this month and pay rent. Okay, do it. Uh, well, she yeah, but I mean, it's not really shocking her. Oh well, no, I don't mean <laughs> she just be yeah. <laughs> this is your big break. I'm gonna be in barbed wire. Who are you? Uh, the girl who gets electrocuted with board you know uh mechanics over her boobs and genitals <laughs> yeah but I... she looks she looks beautiful and she's acting well like i don't feel like no it makes her look bad. i feel that she she paid rent that month and got food so good for her she's making a living out I don't of it know. i think i think there's a lot worse roles <laughs> yes. to do for just money uh her hair was lovely I don't remember. I just remember her beautiful oh. face. Oh, I just... I just she had mean, a thing like, over her eye, too. After she? after oh, she's been electrocuted, her hair is just, like, insane, and I just thought it was funny. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I it's just, like, all I... these things. This is funny. I was just looking at her face. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be watching this with such a critical eye afterwards now. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of want to just like, I kind of want to just like see your re- like real time reactions to this movie now. It's <laughs> like, oh, she's well, got such a pretty me, face. Well, it's just me being happy. Just imagine <laughs> me just being happy. That's me watching that movie. <laughs> so after he gets his information, uh... or like, or like every time the Bob Wire says something ice cold and cutting, I go yes. <laughs> <laughs> and do you do like a fist pump in the air? I just did one. Oh, <laughs> I literally I'll, just did it. That's I'll have great. to take your word for it. <laughs> so after the head of the uh, congressional the, directorate, the congressional directorate gets his information, uh, he phones up a Buggles video, and they're basically discussing that uh, they're trying to find this doctor. So this is kind of like I guess the heralding moment of the movie. Hmm. Mm. 
Yeah, um, the uh, are you talking about? The, oh yes. The, so what happens is uh, in the in the world of the movie, uh, in all the other areas that are uh, kind of under martial law, there's a doctor, Doctor Devonshire, and a freedom fighter named Axel, and they've escaped because she has some sort of information that will kind of bring them down. And where does she want to escape to, Nathan? Canada. <laughs> Safe well, haven. Specific. Yeah, exactly. Which I could tell this movie is fictional because they want to go to Quebec. Oh, oh hey. <laughs> hey, I'm from there. I spent five I'm, years there one week. I'm I was born there, I can make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they want to get to Canada, which even like another part of this movie that to me it's like, wow, that's that's uh that's super fictional because Barb Wire wants her money in Canadian. Yes. Yes. I'm like, yeah, you got 2017 wrong with that one. Well, you know well, what? Well, only because there hasn't been a civil war yet. But once the civil war is over, then they they might <laughs> have got 2017 story. wrong. But if we go back a few years before that, there actually was a time when we were at par. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Uh, but we 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 go to the Hammerhead Bar, which is basically this the same idea as like the the bar in uh, Casablanca. Is <laughs> everything kind of happens there? Who was the bouncer? Uh, Udo Kier. Uh, Zeus. Oh, sorry. Udo Kier is the waiter. Zeus yes. is at the door. Mm-hmm. He's he has like one line, and then we never see him again. <laughs> I don't care. I, as soon as I saw him, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on a side note. I was actually expecting a lot more Johnny Mnemonic out of this movie than I got. I'm going to say that. More steampunky, um, or not necessarily, cyberpunk, rather, uh, mm. where people are, they're, they're more hybrid with machine, and everything is a lot more uh, Akira than it was. I mean, for God's sake, at one point, somebody's driving a Subaru Outback. <laughs> So what you're saying is you wanted a scene where a dolphin was able to blow people's heads up. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Were you going to say, Kat, did you say you saw Johnny Mnemonic? No, I was going to say I love Udo Kier. Oh, he's yes. Great. Isn't he great? I yes. think he's the best part of this movie for me. I, I, yes. I love that guy. Hey, was and the I, guy... Love their, I love their relationship. Yeah. You know, that kind of that close friendship thing. It's beautiful. Was so the Udo... guy from Faith No More giving tattoos in the club? <laughs> that seemed unsanitary too, because there's like there's a there's an area there's people singing, there's people dancing, there's people drinking, there's tattoos in the corner. There's <laughs> Guile from Street Fighter Two. The movie is there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I must have I must have missed them in the crowd. Uh, but we find out that the cl- the bar is not doing s- super well, even though it's like jam packed with people. <laughs> Right. Um, it's some some sort of <laughs> what? What? No, I'm just laughing. Yes, because it's, oh. there may be like a little logic disconnect. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, like, people, but they're not making a dime. Right. Yeah, he's like, I don't know how I'm gonna get paid. I'm like, what? There's like <laughs> 500 people in that bar. Do you not make any profit? Do you sell things at cost? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Well, you know, it's, it's congressional's taking all the taxes and all that. Well, it is well, you the know second what? Civil War, so you, you, you <laughs> might have a point. You might have a point because Xander Berkeley does play a detective who barbed wire is constantly paying off. So yes, right, that's true. But um, she says, okay, well, I'm going to go out and uh, and I'm going to I'm going to get I'm going to get some more money for the bar. So she's going to go out on a job. Get a bubble and, bath. And t- yeah, tell them I'm taking a bubble bath. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the thing is, at first, you think she's going to be like a prostitute. Right. Because she's kind of just hanging out outside the building, waiting for this guy oh, to come over. And... Funny thing. When she flashes the, pardon the pun, prostitute's license, did yeah. you notice that it had a different date on it? Yes. I thought this was in 2017. Yeah. And it was marked that she was marked as a clean health in... January 7th, 2019. Yeah. Well, that must be the expired date. No, uh, because it said this that was clean health as of. Yeah, I think they maybe just like 
changed the well, date at the last second, didn't have time to go back and reshoot or it. Or they could just be going with that she flashed it real quick because it was not her name on it, so it was clearly right, a, fake a fake license. ID. Well, sure, because he's not actually a prostitute. Unfortunate, because right. I would have paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love how, how like, cliche gross they make this guy too oh yeah yes. right like he's got he's got food on his clothes he's got a bag of porn magazines the his, elevator his... in his building is disgusting yeah and it, like okay well here's my question so this ultimately ends up being a ploy so that pam anderson can find this guy krebs who she's right. after yeah. but how does she know she's going to that building because he takes her there she doesn't say hey come with me here well she she singled him out Hmm. She's done her homework. She's done her research. She knows. Oh, knows that he like pick. lives there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because I I just thought she was finding like a random guy. No. Okay. She's definitely singled him out. She knows that he's there. He's tracked. She's tracked his movements. He's the mark. She, she knows what he will. likes. This was all in the deleted scenes, guys. <laughs> we find out uh, that he was I don't in a think fraternity. It's too much of a stretch of an imagination to to think that she probably singled him out. <laughs> okay, I'll buy it. I'll let you off the hook with this one, cat. Okay, thank you. But we You're do welcome. find out he was in a fraternity because he comes out with that paddle with the Greek letters on it. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is uh, this is something. So I do have a clip of this scene because I wanted to play something here from this. Oh, I have an idea. Why don't you go change into something a little more comfortable? How about something a little less comfortable? can hardly wait. Did you wash your hands? No. I was bad. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> Did you wash your hands? Yeah. <laughs> I was bad. <laughs> That's not <laughs> enticing. <laughs> Considering what he thinks they're about to do, it's probably the least gross thing. Well, yeah. Right, but it's it's his thing, and he likes to be punished, so. <laughs> but it's like, but it's like, Oh no, I just took a crap and I didn't wash my hands. I'm a bad boy. No one like, said he took what? a crap. That's where you're going, Brendan. I think you did. In my version of the movie, there's a scene there where it's just him pooping. I think you have scatological issues. <laughs> no, I I uh I'm fine. So so yeah, they uh they he thinks they're gonna do stuff. He has his frat paddle mm-hmm. oh. and she busts it over his head. Oh yeah, yes. poor guy. <laughs> He just wanted to be loved. Is that so wrong? And the thing is, no. it's understandable, too, because if she is, even though it's a fake license, if she has a license for prostitution, it's a completely legal thing for him to do. And it's funny because he even asks her at one point if she's a cop. It's like, why would you bother asking? Wouldn't you just say, hey, let me see your license? <laughs> yeah. Flaws. <laughs> he probably doesn't believe that such a beautiful woman... You know, could Would be, be a, a prostitute, prostitute. and well, interested in him. Maybe oh. in that section of town, maybe. Yeah. Clearly yeah. he has not seen Pretty Woman then, because Pretty Women are prostitutes in that movie. Right. Right, that's true. And that is a documentary. But she knocks him out and then blows out his wall. <laughs> blows out the wall and yes. gets this guy, Krebs. Um, this... A uh, noise that she makes, which I think she tries to soundproof it with the mattress, or at least block some of the effect. But like, it still alerts everyone in the building. I think it's more um, of a blocking shrapnel move. Yeah, but she still hides behind something, so it's like I don't understand. But all these guys come upstairs. There's a big shootout uh, with her and the, all these guys, and then someone calls her babe again. Don't mm-hmm. call me Gordy. <laughs> deep cut <laughs> yeah because she was gonna let him live i think yeah i think so well i mean did she really did she kill other ones i think she kills all the other ones guys though doesn't she yeah i, think I she mean she's just gonna let him slink out the back yeah probably i mean well, above all babe, it... and then she's like no you don't get to live <laughs> and, and he shoots know. him like 85 times <laughs> yeah thank god good for her see that's where the feminism comes in there you go. It's like we're, we're fighting back. Guys, um, get ready for the special edition Blu-ray of Barbed Wire with uh, optional audio commentary from Katarina Waters. I, I'm not going to lie. I would that buy would that. Good. Just so I, I can would hear the idea. sheer true enjoyment. 
Mm-hmm. You'd have to get the video commentary so you can see my fist pumps. There you oh. go. <laughs> fist pump audio commentary and yes. audio video commentary. <laughs> so uh, she so she gets this guy Krebs. She takes him over to see Clint Howard. And that's when the movie gets really sexy, because Clint Howard is here. <laughs> right? The smoldering, yeah. unchained sensuality of one Clint Howard. <laughs> Katarina, a cat on a scale of one to ten, Clint Howard. Is that Smith? Smith? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 25? Well, um, I mean, let's just say he's a brilliant character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so... It's so diplomatic of you. I love that. Uh, well, he's not meant to be hot, is he? I don't know. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Let's go with it. Hey, Clint Howard knows who he is. Yeah, he's Ron's brother. Right. <laughs> he was in that Star uh, Trek episode that one time. It's right. So this is the moment where Pam asks for the Canadian money, which is worth uh, a lot more apparently than right. yeah. American money because, because he can the... use it out in the free world. That's right, and you got to keep right. on rocking in that free world. Yes. Boom. Awesome. That wasn't wrestling, but I just wanted to say it. That yeah, was a good joke. <laughs> Thank you. Nathan doesn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Unless I'm making the dad jokes, they suck. <laughs> uh... I'm not allowed to because I'm not a dad. Okay. Just just a father of dog and cats. <laughs> anyway, uh, John Connor's dad shows up at the bar. Well, John Connor's <laughs> stepdad, sorry. Uh, as a detective Willis. That's where he was from. Fuck. Hell yeah, Xander Berkeley. Bugging the hell out of me. <laughs> and he's basically just... Uh, so we should also note, too, in this world, uh, they have retinal scanners. And that's how they identify everyone. And he's just retinal scanning and arresting mm. people left and right. Uh, Bar- Barb eventually is like, "Listen, uh, get out of my bar." Um, yeah, she ends up paying him off to mm-hmm. get out, and yeah, that's uh, that's that. Yes, <laughs> very succinctly put. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to sum up that scene quickly. There's also a weird off one-off scene. Oh, I guess we didn't even mention Charlie, did we? Oh, yeah. And the fact that they're still making Chanel number no. five after the second American Civil War. <laughs> hey, well, they were Charlie's always blind. they were always making well Chanel number no. five. It's probably also because they have connections to the underground. It's probably still on the black market. Oh, well, it's a fair black point. market Chanel. <laughs> they're bringing it in from Canada. There you go. Guys, <laughs> what we're trying to say is Canada is the savior in this movie. Yes. Kind of are. Well, I'm not even exaggerating. That's where everyone literally yeah. wants to be in the movie. I mean, it doesn't... It, it, it's probably got something to do with the lead actress being Canadian, but... Mm-hmm. No, I think there's... I mean, obviously, if you're doing the parallel to Casablanca, they got to get out of the... They got to get out of Morocco, right? And mm-hmm. then there's the whole... There is the whole thing that it is based on the comics. Now, I'm not super versed in the comics... But it seems to me if they're doing something post-apocalyptic, obviously that you know, Canada being the next nearest country might have fared a bit better because if it's a civil war, it probably wouldn't have affected Canada as much. So we don't. Uh, so yeah, I don't. I don't know anything about the comics either. But yeah, I, I, that does make sense. That they're. I mean, it's the closest, uh, like the closest con- neighboring country to be like you know a free kind of area to get to. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. So he, so Charlie, Pam Anderson's uh, brother in the movie, uh, who is basically, it, to me, is like a mix of like in Chris Jericho and Edge. A little bit. True. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> now you were in the company with both men, Cat. Is this their love child? Confirm or deny? Well, if I knew, <laughs> I would not be allowed to say anything. <laughs> but let me just say that your instincts might be correct. Oh, <laughs> that is a scoop. No, think about the. You have to think about the timeline because obviously it's now 2017. True. Uh, well, I, think we're, I guess we have to change the name <laughs> of our uh, podcast to "Talk Is Slanderous." Right, because unless <laughs> they went time traveling back. 
That being said, no, I'm Chris I mean, Jericho, there's... Edge, we gotta talk about your kids. <laughs> uh, or it could be like the long lost brother. Oh, there you go. There you, yeah, they there's are the both story. Canadian as well, right? Uh, are they? The yeah, the, the character. Yeah. No, Edge Wait. and Christian, uh, Edge and uh, Chris Jericho, are both Canadians. Well, Jericho was born in New York, I think. He's though. Canadian. Knock it <laughs> off. <laughs> I mean, basically. So, uh, moving on from uh, the brother slash possibly love child of Chris Jericho right. and Edge, yeah. um, the Congressional enter the bar, and they are basically wearing Nazi uniforms. Essentially, yes. yep. Like so it's, essentially Nazis. Oh yeah, like that, and then again, Casablanca, and they're basically there to scout out uh, do- the Doctor and Axel. And we should note at this point too that the Doctor, Doctor Devonshire, uh, has undergone plastic surgery. To change mm-hmm. her appearance, so they're just looking to obviously retinal scan her. Actually, when they mentioned plastic surgery at first, I was like, I kind of was like doing something else at the time, and I thought I was like, wait, why are they what? I thought they were talking about Barb Wire's character, and I got really <laughs> confused <laughs> as to why that was a plot point. <laughs> right. I think um, probably in the in the magic of the movie, she just she was born with it. Yeah, like just. That. Just like Dolly Parton. They just grew, yeah, they just grew into those tremendous, beautiful, round shapes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's not wrong. I mean... No. I mean, we'll get Pam Anderson on the podcast and ask her. Let's yeah. do that. <laughs> she Hold on, I'll call her right now. I'm talking about Pam Anderson. We know that Pam Anderson had surgery, probably. Oh, sorry. But... I mean Barb Wire. I'll call oh, her character. Barb Wire, exactly. 100% yeah. did. Yes. If you yeah. want right. to see what Pam Anderson looked like before Hollywood hit her like a ton of bricks, look up Pamela Anderson, Blue Zone Girl, because she was a model in uh, British Columbia before she head down south to you know, California, and uh, she's brunette and um, very proportionate. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's night and day, yeah, very yeah. different. <laughs> So, <laughs> what did you guys think? So, we get a little bit of uh, Devonshire and Axel, the two people that have gone on the run. What do you think about the the people they meet in this, like, resistance? The one who needs, like, a voice modulator? Spike. Spike, yeah. Mm. I, 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 I thought that was strange because you could also hear her voice behind the modulator, so I'm not sure why she had that. Because she had a, what's it called, a tracheotomy? Tracheotomy? <laughs> Yeah, right? So it's like when Kane had that voice box. <laughs> I will say I don't this. Know. <laughs> Patty didn't care I don't for know it. how those things work. Cat, we need yes, answers. Well, well I, I mean, I appreciate the idea, you know, to just give it a little bit of extra, like, flavor. I also didn't care for it that much, to be honest with you. Oh, oh we got a criticism out of her. Oh. Patty didn't care for It's not for a criticism either. Of, a, of the movie as such. It's just like it wouldn't have been necessarily my preference. But I also appreciate the, you know, it gives it like a little bit of a flavor, I think. <laughs> Did you say Patty didn't care for it either, Nathan? No, she was like, why does, why does her voice have to sound like that? <laughs> well, and it was funny because like she's doing this in passion speech, but the whole time it kind of sounds like when we recorded our first podcast episode, oh, and our worst. voices just sounded like robots in the Mine background specifically. Mm. Yeah, and it's like, uh, yeah, da, da, da. like it's just like, and I'm like trying. We to pay watched attention. Kiss Phantom of the Park, <laughs> and I'm trying to pay attention to what she's saying, but all I can hear is that like metallic voice in mm-hmm. the background. But anyway, Pamela Anderson. Mm-hmm taking a bath at her bar yes a bubble bath if i ever own my own bar i'll probably have a bubble bath installed what do you think guys do you do the same? well she lives there doesn't she i think so because she has a bedroom yeah. there right yeah she lives up there mm-hmm. of course she has I mean... a bubble bath at her house <laughs> she lives there she has an office there it's a bar it's like it's a one-stop Ta- shop tattoos uh food off the grill uh, <laughs> right. it's, a, it's a sushi bar uh <laughs> Yeah, is there everything? Everything. In, there's a Mark's Work Warehouse there. Uh, is that a Canadian thing? Maybe that's, that's Canadian, a Canadian but... thing, bud. Okay. But anyway, Barb gets interrupted by Axel, who they and they have some kind of history together. Yes. And and, and what exactly is that history? Well, they were lovers. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, they were in the war together, right? Yes. I didn't understand. 
the thing where she was mad. Like, I know he ran off and yes. did join them when they were evacuating. But, like, what was the reason and why? I get why she was, like, upset. But, like, what was the reason he, like, runs off at that point? Well, see, that's the thing. You don't know why he runs off. Obviously, something happened to where he couldn't come. She took it as a rejection, so she was mad. Okay. Well, I thought, to me, I thought it was that like he couldn't make the the lift, the, the chopper out of yes. the demilitarized zone, and she thought that he was dead. Oh, yeah, no. maybe. No? Because that no. when he shows up, they're like, oh, my God, and then... She's super pissed because why didn't you come find me after you made it out alive? Right, but the dude comes up to her and says, "Hey, are you Barbara Kapinski? Whatever her name." Bar- Barbara <laughs> Barbara Wire? No, it's like no, Kapinski what? or something like that. No, no, no. Yeah. Her real name. Yeah, and Kapetsky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kapetsky, and she says yes, and then he says, "Axel wanted me to let you know he's not coming." So obviously he wasn't dead. But okay. she thought that he'd basically just ran off and never try to contact her again. Like, he wasn't that interested. So, he broke her heart. That's why she's mad. Okay. <laughs> Nathan? It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense to you because you're a boy. It makes perfect sense to me. Oh. <laughs> wow. Deep. Working I, uh Guys, to your respective corners, please. <laughs> <laughs> Barb does because does become overwhelmed and her and Axel start making out in the elevator. Yeah. Right in front of Axel's wife. <laughs> yes. Who has like a, a reaction to it, but it's also kind of a non-reaction because she's like, oh yeah, just do that right in front of me. Okay, anyway, back right, to normal. So it's on paper. Yeah, What's that? It's on paper. It's, on paper. it's only on paper. That's what we find out. But but they say I thought that he said it was on paper at first. Yeah, I was implying a bit that they. About that too, to yeah, honest. that that implied to me like they later fell in love. Right. Which I was like, oh well, I would be a little bit more than upset <laughs> if I yes. saw that. Right. Hey, it's but 2017. But... Things are wild. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was about to say we progressed a little bit from the <laughs> traditional, old-fashioned monogamous. Yeah, it's the 2010s. Monogamy is dead. Right. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> there you go. Let's make a note Dance. here to tell my wife that. <laughs> <laughs> well, she might feel the same way. You never know. Ooh, yeah. I think that's a hard no. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, we do learn, though, finally, we finally do learn why uh, Devonshire has uh, run off from the uh, from the congressional is that she has information about like a super AIDS virus mm-hmm. that kills you in 12 hours. And it's called Red Ribbon. Subtle. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Um, and apparently it took out all of Kansas. Wow. <laughs> Nathan. What? Don't, don't insult the good people of Kansas. That's not like I yeah I suppose it's not like they're Wyoming. Anywho, mm-hmm. so I love also like whenever there's like dramatic stuff, we get that like wah wah guitar in the background. Well, yeah, Tommy Lee, right? Oh, definitely. <laughs> he was definitely on set, like supervising the whole time. <laughs> well, no, it's just that <laughs> he's a music guy, and his music's even in the movie. Yeah. Well, that- I mean, yeah, the uh, that song "Planet Boom." Uh, mm. it's played in the club at one point where like boom over here, boom over there, boom everywhere. That's his. That's cool. like his solo joint. Well, I have nice kind of heard horror stories though that Tommy Lee was really uh, possessive and that he would actually just be off, just off set, like supervising the entire shoot, making everybody oh. very uncomfortable. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's huh. got. Uh, he's definitely got some control issues. Yeah. And I say that Who'd as a fan it? of Motley Crue. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So at this point, the congressional, uh, actually, sorry, at this point, uh, we get uh, we get Clint Howard back into the movie, I believe. Mm, fine. And, yes. and he comes in to tell Barb, like, look, I've got these lenses. And these yeah. lenses mean you can pass any retinal scanner you want. Like, you'll just get right through, which is what the doctor and Axel are after because they uh, they need to get to Canada. Right, and they can only um, get out if she has those lenses. Exactly. So, but Barb Wire is still kind of on her own. She doesn't. She's still kind of fending for herself. Says, "No, I'm not interested." Uh, so Clint Howard decides to plant them in the bar anyway. 
mm-hmm. and takes off. Yes. <laughs> At this point, Clint, or I guess before that, we should note Clint Howard's entire crew gets mowed down by the Congressional. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which, one of the guys says, sorry, they weren't listening. <laughs> like, when he they apologizes were, doesn't for he say- does he say, sorry, they were resisting? Yeah, they yes. were resisting. <laughs> they literally opened the Which, door and shot. Right. That's kind of like, you know, but then I saw it because obviously it never occurred to me before. The other times watching it and this time watching it was like, oh, it's kind of like how it is in real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That's kind of scary. Um, Open the door, you see somebody goes, oh, yeah, he was resisting arrest. Yeah. He, he seemed threatening. Okay. He was walking right. away from you. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, not this to get political, be... but it's an important subject. So hey, let's no, I'm, it. I'm, 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 I think both of us are, are on board with that. Uh, that it's, yeah. it's not the first time we've covered a movie that was like a, a stealth social commentary mm. thing. I mean, look at Ben and Arthur. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Mm. Um, but no, it does feel kind of weirdly like press prescient. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Yes. Like, I mean, back in 1996, it seemed like just a you know, it could never happen, fantasy type deal. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, are we seeing the rise of fascism? Is yeah. Is barbed wire going to happen? Well, we better get, uh, I mean, who, who, who's going to be our barbed wire of the modern age? Kat, I, I think, I hear you're stepping up to the plate. Uh, I think I'm going to have to. So have with to the, me. the remake, let's get this done. Right. <laughs> we'll have a script to you have... in two weeks. <laughs> Am I going to have to get that surgery? <laughs> I mean, at the very yeah. least, the tattoo. You gotta get the tattoo. I'll I'll do the tattoo. Okay. I okay. will make that sacrifice. The tattoo <laughs> and the blonde wig. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'll dye my hair blonde. How's that? They're perfect. I happily, that's, happily do that. That's even more dedication. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I like. I really. I had a great time watching this movie, but I. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I would have rather watch Tank Girl. <laughs> I haven't seen it. It hey. feels. It, it did feel very Tank Girl esque. Well, yeah. it's also another comic book post apocalyptic movie, right? Wait, Kat, you've never seen Tank Girl? No, I probably should, huh? Ooh. You know what? I think if you like this, I think you would enjoy it, it a probably, great deal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Starring Lori Petty and Ice Tea Nao- and Naomi Watts. <laughs> no, Naomi. Way. Yeah, Naomi Watts <laughs> Naomi like first. Watts, isn't it? Her like first role. Yeah, she plays Jet Girl. Wow. Super early. Um. Okay, so anyway, so Clint Howard plants that stuff in the bar. Uh, they, after mowing down his men, they try to like they have this machine that you could they can like read their brains and like see images of what they saw like while they were alive, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but sometimes and, you only get dreams. Yeah, sometimes you only get dreams, which I mean that's a broken system. <laughs> <laughs> it's as reliable as a polygraph. <laughs> yeah, it it doesn't seem like something that should hold up in court, uh, but. I mean, do they even have courts at this point? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, the congressional is basically like, okay, we saw a barbed wire in one of the images. You got it. We got to arrest her. We have a warrant for her arrest. Let's do it right now. Mm-hmm. Raiding the bar and searching for the uh, for the lenses. We get a close call. They almost catch the doctor uh, and um, and Axel. Axel. Yeah. But Charlie, old blind Charlie, he manages to <laughs> grab like. Rip something out of the retinal lens scanner? No, or he's using a uh, like an interrupter. Oh, I thought he ripped something out of the machine. No, it's it's jamming the electrical. Okay. Yeah. And either way, they they try to use it and it doesn't work, and so the doctor and Axel are let are able to leave the bar. They don't find the retinal lenses because Charlie also found them. Uh, one blind man found the retinal lenses before an entire team of like congressional well, soldiers. Well, I can tell you why that is. Please okay. do. And if you'd watched closely, you might have picked up on it. That's right, Brendan. Um, <laughs> because oh, it's when, from all sides. when Smith places them under the bar, it makes like a noise. And then he's sitting nearby because it pans right over from the close-up of the lenses under the thing. You know, it makes that clicking noise as it attaches to the underside of the bar. And then it pans over to Charlie who's sitting right there. And he hears it because he has those heightened ear senses. And then that's when he picks them up. And then when Bob Wire comes and gets him so that he doesn't get hurt, he already has them. Fair enough. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what happened. Not fair enough. No, oh, fair enough is my way of saying fine. Yes, okay. <laughs> I concede. I concede to you. Right, good. 
Um, yeah, so he has the lenses, and Barbed Wire's like, sweet, I'm gonna go sell them. He does not want that, though. No, because he's also trying to help the Resistance. Right. Um, and in, and in this scene, Barb drives off to meet a fella named Big Fatso, who <laughs> is big I, and fat. Who is big and fat, offensive. like much like his name. Offensive. <laughs> Which, by the way, at first, I thought, just like... I thought it was possibly Shaquille O'Neal in a fat oh suit. God, that would have been great. <laughs> um, I do want to play a little bit of the dialogue between these two, between Pam Anderson and uh, Big Fatso. So just give me one second here. Donuts. I thought I'd be here for you real soon. I have a proposition. Oh, now ain't that sweet. But you know I only like big, fat women. <laughs> a business proposition. As in lenses? Oh, now don't give me that surprise look. Like you don't know what I'm talking about. You didn't drive all the way to the heart of the evil empire to see how my diet's going. So that's the kind of back and forth we get in that scene. <laughs> uh, he's like, he, uh, they, she wants safe passage for her and her brother to Canada. And I think she says like, say, I agree, like 750,000 Canadian dollars uh, for these lenses. <laughs> However, it started at what, like two million or something? Yeah, and it goes down and down. They they negotiate. Um, I like his henchmen too, because like <laughs> one of them is dressed like a medieval knight. <laughs> They're very like Mad Max. Like we talked about Mad Max yeah. earlier. It felt very Mad Max villain esque. Sure. Uh, unbeknownst to her, though, Charlie is uh, runs into a little bit of bad luck here because mm. he goes to visit the resistance, and they've all been brutally murdered. And uh, he is killed as well by the congressional. Yeah. Sadly. After a uh, terrifying interrogation. Yes, but he doesn't give anything away because he's his heart is with the resistance. That's he, right. He instead he gives up uh, Santa well, he, Claus. Yeah. He yeah, fingers he does Santa give, Claus. That's true. Oh, my. <laughs> in the sequel, in the deleted scene, they actually murdered Santa. Oh. <laughs> but I like they the thought way it was Cat a, put it, though. He fingered Santa. <laughs> That's the correct okay. term to use, isn't it? <laughs> this movie rated R. <laughs> Not like that. I mean, he ratted him out. Yeah, I oh. know. Yeah, that's what we he meant. He pointed what... his finger at. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make it any better. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry, Cat. Show I'm us sorry. on the mall, Santa, where he touched you. <laughs> So Santa gets killed, and uh, but unbeknownst, to, that's still not uh, Barbara is still not aware of this. So she tells she tells Udo Kier, who haven't really talked about a whole lot, but she tells him like, "Okay, you'll be running the bar now because me and yours. Charlie are just taking off." Yeah. He's like, "I've never run a bar before." She's like, "Don't worry, you'll be fine." Now, eh. seriously, he is running that bar already. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He is. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. I just like how he. Is like I don't know what to do, and she says, "You got this." <laughs> right, because he's like, "I'm just a waiter," but you never see him wait anything. He just no. He's, he's completely he, obvious that he's the manager. Yeah, he yeah. He, I mean, like, he's, he's, he is running it. Yeah. yeah, he's an assistant. He's a bodyguard. He right, sometimes he's serves everything. drinks. He's a bouncer. He's a friend. He's yeah. a trusted friend. He's trusted a dog ally. wrangler. He's a pal yeah. and a confidant. Uh, <gasps> quick, and if quick. you threw a party. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say a quick, uh, quick bit of trivia about the dog, Camille, okay. right? Her was a Rottweiler, Camille. Mm-hmm. So I play a game of D&D on Sunday nights that we stream on Twitch. And uh, I have a ranger and I have a wolf companion. And my wolf companion is called Camille as a nice. tribute to Camille from Bob Wire. Awesome. <laughs> There you go. Side note so. too, the dog, Patty's favorite part of the movie. <laughs> I did like the dog. A, like big affection for dogs. I did like the dog dragging someone out by their balls. Yeah. Really? Because I felt that that whole scene was just to just to feature that. Oh, it was a hundred percent. They literally had nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Yep. <laughs> but it but, showed, you know, Camille. Yeah. Well, obviously, Camille inspired you and probably others. 
Right. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> I um I, I second that, Nathan, because I also love dogs. I was happy to see a dog that didn't get killed in the movie. <laughs> yes. Because I was I was worried for that dog. Of course you were, yeah. June. <laughs> Anyway. So, yeah. So she's leaving. Udo doesn't know how to run a bar, but he does. <laughs> right, and she. Uh, but then, but then, when she finds out where Charlie has gone, she's like, "Uh oh, we got to get there right now." And of course, she finds out that he is has been killed uh, by the congressional. And this is the last straw, seemingly, because this is where uh, the doctor and Axel also show up, and she finally is like, "All right, fine, let, I'll help you." Let's get let's uh, let's let's get you guys out of out of here and into Canada with the uh, information you got. Right. Um, so they go back to uh, Big Fatso, mm-hmm. but but this time uh, we learn that well, first of all, he gives her a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar golden debit card mm-hmm. <laughs> instead of cash. Yes, <laughs> um, but we also learn that the whole thing was a setup, mm-hmm. and the congressional just start storming the place. Right. And let's mention real quick that she has actually thrown the contact lenses to him. Yeah, yes. well, see, we, we think she has. Right. So don't, don't square the don't deal. Give it a word. <laughs> she throws him the contact lens case. She throws him the contact lenses, 100% she does. They're <laughs> definitely there. No <laughs> doubt about it. Right. And Axel's that. like, what are you doing? And she's like, I told you to stay in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved it at one point if she had just called him, like, just bitch or something. Just totally no. reversed it. And and ha- had been, like, the, for lack of a better descriptor, the man in the situation. The stereotype. she is the man right. in the situation. She doesn't have to call him a bitch for that. She's much too classy. <laughs> What's well, she- <laughs> Can we just spend a quick moment on all the awesome one-liners she has? Because we haven't mentioned that yet. Rattle them off. Rattle them off. She has maybe like the best dialogue in any uh, action film like this. (laughs) I like how you were like like, carefully qualifying it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, because there are probably a lot of films that have really good, you know, one I wasn't. I didn't want to like, say like she has the best dialogue in every movie, you know, ever. But yeah. the one-liners that she does have can hang with some of the best and the greats. Like like the yippie kaye motherfuckers of the of the of the movies. Right. Well, she yes, but she doesn't say that. No, no. But I'm just She's saying just, like some of the, she, like some she, of the she, greats. Right. Some. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yes. You know, Those... like for example, when uh, when Schmidt tries to sell the, the lenses and she doesn't take them, and he's like, "I just want to get out." She's like, "He went out, click your heels together three times," and he goes, "You're gonna regret this." And she says, "I'll add that to my list." You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. She has. It lots doesn't of sound as good when I say it. Well, it sounds much better when she says. It. Well, Kat, yeah. it's just because we haven't really gone. We haven't rehearsed the script yet with you, so yeah, I mean, that's it's, true. We have it. This movie is, we still got a few months. Yeah. (laughs) We're still scouting locations. So, I mean, just like, you know, take some time, go over the lines. We'll we'll get this. We'll we'll nail this. I I do like that she has that um, cliched brassiness to it. And I think that's what really lends um, a lot to the movie as far as having a good time while watching it. And I can certainly see how in 96, uh, people Mm. were like, ugh this but now it's exactly the kind of movie that i i think that a lot of people would take a second look at and go this is everything i need today yeah and also not for nothing because people always go like oh she doesn't act it well but i disagree because it was I feel considerably like better than exactly... any episode of vip i've ever seen i haven't seen that that was her but i feel show. like she has because she has that cold stoicness of this you know, she's been hurt and she's angry, but then she's just cold on top of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I feel that she portrays that very well. She's definitely um, I wouldn't say she's like a traditional acting performance, but she. Right. But for she, that role, you shouldn't have that anyways. You know well, what I mean? no. Like, 
but I mean, she's not like uh, she's not like you know a, a dull like she's not like a piece of wood. You know what I mean? Like, she's right. not just no. like. And yeah. you even get like you said that feeling of being wronged or hurt, but she's bearing it because there's the times yes. like when Charlie finds her in the bar and she's been drinking all night. Yeah, it's not uh-huh. because she was hooting up and having a good time. She started drinking yeah. after that bar closed so she could drink away the pain. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So. There's there is a subtlety to the character that I think goes underappreciated. I agree. <laughs> Sorry, I, I want I, Brendan. I think it's legit. No, I'm ag- I'm agreeing, but I just the just the the fact that you, just the sentence itself. There's a subtlety <laughs> to barbed wire that right. <laughs> it, it sounds ridiculous, like out of context. You know what I mean? It like, does, I get yes, it, yeah. but it's yeah, but that's exactly true. It's exactly right. So. Pam, so yeah, so they're they're getting arrested. Uh, they get they get arrested because Big Fatso set them up. Um, however, uh, good old Xander Berkeley, John Connor's stepdad, is like, listen, whispers to her quick. I didn't have anything to do with Charlie's death. Here's a here's a grenade. Uh, <laughs> then he just I just have to have I just happen to have this uh, this smart grenade on me here. There you go. Uh, she throws it up in the air to distract everyone. Hilariously lands on Big Fatso and blows him up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which that was a missed opportunity. That should have been a lot grosser. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was just kind of like oh, an explosion, like a regular explosion. But uh, this begins kind of the finale of the movie because they take off uh, the, the, with the congressional uh, driving after them. They go into this like construction yard, I guess. It's yeah. like uh no, it's like a loading bay or uh, like a dock. Yeah. yeah. So shipping containers and stuff there. Machinery for miles. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um it just and... happens to be on the way between Big Fatso's lair <laughs> and Canada. Yeah, and the airport, airport. yeah. Well, yeah. It's the unoccupied zone, didn't they say that? Oh yeah. Yeah, he says yeah, like this right. is yeah. this is like the empire of evil or something. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. so they have these. Uh, she tells uh, the doctor and Axel, you know, get 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 out of here. Uh, tells Xander Berkeley to take them out, take them to the airport. Mm-hmm. Uh, Axel gets caught up with. I don't think it's any like specific character. I think he just fights one of the guys, one of the congressional right. guys, on top of this like platform. And uh-huh. you know, he what he should have used uh, to mm-hmm. defeat him. Yeah, a crane kick. <laughs> <laughs> Zing! See, they're great when I do it. Yeah. Oh, ow, ow! Quite what that 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 uh, that. Just, mm? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny joke. Let's uh, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Next week. <laughs> um pam anderson is uh is on her motorcycle she gets her legs stuck uh in like a like a forklift i guess mm-hmm. no, driven by it's like in the, the the kickstart on the um on the motorcycle her foot stuck in between the fork uh i guess the bend in the fork for the forklift and the the kickstart on the motorcycle yeah, which is driven by the main not Nazi dude who we didn't even mention, uh, right. Kreiser or whatever, right? The the, yep. the main dude who's yeah. like doing the experiments or whatever. Yep. Uh, so he, yeah, he he and they they have their big fight. Um, I, I kind of think like she should have been able to get him on her own though. Do you know what I mean? Like this part because Axel kind of has to save the day a little bit. Mm. I feel like if like if she's like the main, you know, ass kicking heroine, I feel like that should have been a fight kind of on its own where she takes him down without any help. And it also he comes across as like a a mastermind, not someone who's got any sort of like special ops training or anything like that. So him in a fight, it, it mm. seems unnatural. And you're right; it seems like she should have been able to take him fairly quickly and on her own but well, yeah, he, that... he just doesn't he just get lucky because her leg stuck oh well, yeah probably yeah. i mean that's the thing isn't it like her leg stuck and he's there and he's got the gun and then that's when axel saves the kind of thing but then at the end i can't remember doesn't she fight him on her own after that and he's yeah because they start fighting and like the car on the um 
on the forklift starts moving and they're they're kind of battling for like the higher ground and that's when axel uh hooks the 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 forklift the whole thing with the crane that he's uh driving which he took from the dumbest fucking crane driver in the history of crane drivers <laughs> oh hey what does oh, this yeah. do does that thing go up yeah that? yeah does that make it go side <laughs> to side uh-huh yeah it does and what does this do which I will say that poor innocent crane driver got punched right. in the face. Right. Why was but he there? Some, <laughs> some rando shows up in the in the crane cockpit that you were responsible for. No hard hat or anything like that on. And you're just like, oh, yeah, I'll give you a tour. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe he's just very trusting of people. Mm. It's 2017. There's no time for that. <laughs> no. But, yeah, Axel saves the day. Uh, well, she does. Uh, Barbed Wire does end up kicking him uh, just in time so he can make that uh, very timely Sonny and Cher reference. Uh, it's yeah. very, like, it's very like hackneyed right. the way he gets to it. Like, I get the, I get what they're trying to do. <laughs> yeah. But the way right. he sets it up is like, you know what my favorite song is? I got you, babe. And yes. If he had been, like, listening to it as, like, a calming device throughout the movie, yeah. then I would have I, I'd allow it, but yeah, it's it's out of nowhere. I don't. <laughs> yeah, and you don't know this, but Nathan actually has say over all movies, and <laughs> if if he allows it, it get, it gets retroactively approved. I see. Not yeah. the case. I actually I actually do agree with that. I thought that that line was a little bit you know clumsy. He could have even just said, "I got you, babe." Right. <laughs> Instead of, "I love that song." Right. I got you, babe, right? Yeah. Yes. Like, at least at that point, it would have been like, oh, okay. It's, it's a weird right. reference to make, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in 2017. But yeah, but... yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, this song is like 60, like, well, not 60, but like, uh, like 40, 50 years old at that point. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, um, so what, what you were saying earlier, I didn't feel that way because I... I kind of paid attention to it a bit because I noticed that too that you know that Axel had to help or whatever, but I didn't feel like it was in a situation where it was a fair fight and she couldn't get him by herself and she needed the man's help. Mm-hmm. It was more like it was unlucky she got stuck and then he was on hand to help her and it kind of you know just brought them together a little bit. Yeah, so no, I, I just I didn't, it didn't bother me as such. I just expected her to get out of the situation and do it like basically all on her own while Axel took out the other guy. That's that's all I thought was right. Mm. That's what I expected was probably going to happen. But he definitely dies because there's a huge explosion uh, as he falls off the uh, as a prizer or whatever falls to his death. Mm. And um, then we got to get to the airport so they can get to Canada. And here's the big twist that I Mm. I pretty much gave away earlier. (laughs) Um (laughs) Did she give those lenses away, Kat? No, she did not. That's right. Because she actually has them in her eyes. Which I kind of want to go back now and see if that's actually, like, accurate before that part. Because didn't didn't her eyes, like, were, were her eyes a different color when she had the lenses in? No, yeah, Cordy's. Yeah, but her eyes are blue, aren't they? But when she takes them out, her eyes are brown. Oh. Really? Yeah. Mm. in the movie you're talking about like pamela anderson's like barbed wire though right like her character like when she takes them out and gives them to the doctor the doctor puts them in her eyes and her eyes are blue when they shoot back on pam anderson her eyes are brown oh Oh. i'm really really interested to go back i might actually go back later and see if that was that was uh (laughs) actually done i find that on youtube Oh yeah, I guess you don't really see. I guess you don't really see her uh, her eyes too much scenes because it's very quick. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, she gives her the lenses. uh, She gets through, and then we have that like Humphrey Bogart, uh, 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 Ingrid Ingmar Bergman uh, final scene or Ingrid Bergman. Sorry, I don't know which one it is, but (laughs) it's the final scene from Casablanca where she's like, you know, you're getting on that plane. You you got to get out of here. That whole thing. Yeah, she gets on, and then we have this little final moment between uh, Barb Wire and uh, John Connor's stepdad, 
uh, to end the movie. And I would just have uh, this is my last clip here. Here we go. Where will you go? Well, I hear Paris is nice this time of year. I do believe I'm falling in love. Get in line. And then it's like brilliant. <laughs> Credits. I was, I was waiting for her to for someone to say, "This is the beginning of a gross, greasy, disgusting friendship." <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good. Maybe you should be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. She seceded. <laughs> um. So that was barbed wire. Any uh, quick final thoughts before we take our commercial break? No. No? no. Anything on the ending? No. Okay. No, gonna... It's it is what it is. Like you said, it's it's cribbed from Casablanca, like most of the movie. Um, I think it fits tonally, of course, because you know it's uh, she's still she's independent when it comes down to it. She doesn't need to run off with Axel, and she doesn't need right. uh, the chief of police. But oh. it's still a bit sad because they're still in lo- in love with each other. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, that, that's, again, Casablanca. Right. <laughs> so I guess uh, we'll, I'll just put this right here since we're all talking about it. So I'm pretty, I'm, I'm guessing across the board we're saying watch it. Yes, thumbs up. But obviously okay. it's too late now because we've given everything away. <laughs> <laughs> still, go well, back yeah. and watch it. I mean, still. It, yes. You guys, just check it out. It was, it's still enjoyable. Well, I've seen it before and I would still watch it again. There you go. All right. Yes. Commercial break. We'll be right back. What Were They Thinking is brought to you by HostGator. HostGator is a leading provider of shared, reseller, VPS, and dedicated hosting solutions. Award-winning support is available 24-7, 365 days a year via phone, email, and live chat. Discover why over 9 million websites trust HostGator. Use the coupon code SCHLUCK for 25% off your first purchase. That's SCHLUCK. S-C-H-L-O-C-K for 25% off your first purchase. What Were They Thinking is brought to you today by GameItAll.com. Whether it's video game news, the latest in music, or movie reviews, GameItAll.com is your one-stop shop for all nerdy talk. And we're back! It was really kind of odd that we're now selling penis pills on our show. Uh, yeah, I know. I, know. I mean, they paid a lot for the ad space. I the, can't the say no. check cleared, right? Checks, yeah. Well, okay, I mean, it's, it's close to it. I, I mean, they're good people. I trust them. Okay. Well, um, Nathan. Uh, yes, Brendan. This is the point of the show where we uh, get a little poetic. Yes, uh, we put on our best NPR voices and uh, smack our lips a lot and speak to. Um, too closely to the microphone this is the low haiku nathan uh yes brandon would you like to begin i would um i would be happy to um uh be the first to uh go barbed wire so much fun cribbed from bogey's very best Reboot coming soon. See, he snaps and I clap because I can't snap my fingers, Cat. Maniacal laugh. Maniacal <laughs> laugh. I was born without the ability to snap. Aww. <laughs> I don't know if that. I don't know if I was born with it, but I definitely can't snap. <laughs> I've tried many times and it's just <laughs> embarrassing every time. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So, um, Brendan, uh, yes. It's um, now your turn uh, to um, go ahead and um, doesn't that sound great? With your syllables, <laughs> Nathan. You're scaring our guest with your noises. <laughs> okay, it's, it's something you want NPR. Um, <laughs> this looks familiar. It's freaking Casablanca, Bogart with big boobs. Yes. <laughs> that was fun. And Cat has a low haiku as well. <laughs> so, so begin. Do I, have to, do I have to smack my lips? No. <laughs> you can do your NPR voice if you want. Okay, I'll try. Okay. 
barbed wire is so hot. If you're lucky, you might kiss her. Just don't call her babe. Very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. <laughs> and a good warning as well. Right, yes, don't call her babe because you'll be dead. <laughs> um. Well, you know, normally I say don't take, you know, you, you know, I say this. I know. Don't take a word for us. But, I mean, I think we all pretty much enjoyed the silliness of this movie. However, let we got to talk about the critics here, because this is where we usually talk about the kind of reaction to this movie. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Not favorable. Not favorable. Has a critic score of 28%. So you'd think, oh, maybe the audience score would be a little higher. Not the case. The audience score is 14%. I think huh. that's unfair. Me too. That's, it's kind of surprising. Yeah. I, I was honestly surprised that the audience score was not like 50, 60. Like. Well, you know, I have a theory about that. I think that people expect a film to be as good as they or people often will find a film as good or bad as they expect it, mm -hmm. you know, within reason, because sometimes I watch something and not be into it and then they'll be surprised. But like, as a general rule, I think if people have like a certain expectation of where that movie's going to fall, mm -hmm. they're going to categorize it as such. It's so like people going into this movie going, ugh, a, a Pam Anderson yeah, movie. It's like, be yeah, it's like, it's going to be stupid. It's going to be cartoonish. It's going to be, you know, whatever. Which, you know what? To be fair, it is, but it's also entertaining. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, well, to let's... To be fair, let's... the first time that I saw it, I be thought, oh, it's a bit silly, but I still enjoyed it. Yeah. And then as I watched it more and more, I was like, oh, this is actually good. <laughs> so... <laughs> there you go. So, you know... Like I said, was... she's not only the president, she's also a client. Mm -hmm. Right. Of the Barbed Wire Fan Club. Right. So first up, uh, this review is from uh, Owen Gleiberman of Entertainment Weekly. Just a little snippet here. He says, this is a negative one. The irony of its style with its high swank grunge clutter is that it's too dissociated to have coherence even as pop. We're always aware that we're watching sets being photographed. That's, uh, that's a, lot of, a lot of words. <laughs> it sounds to me like he took more issue with the aesthetic of it all. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Well, Hal Hinson, <laughs> uh, from the Washington Post, he gave mm -hmm. it a, a tomato score. So, I mean, I guess it's fresh, or at least enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. The movie carries its cyberpunk variation right through to the end, and usually with enough wit and craziness to freshen the mix. Then, there's mm -hmm. Pamela Lee, whose tight, disciplined performance deserves more respect than it will almost certainly get. And I'm sorry, did you say that that was Hal Hinson or Katarina Waters? Well, how handsome. Right, because I, that sounds like I might have written it. <laughs> have you written, do you currently write for the Washington Post? <laughs> and name uh, how I'm Hinson. retired from... <laughs> I'm ghostwriting, let's say. Ghost <laughs> as, as Hal Hinson. <laughs> right. I, I'm on no, board with line, most of it, except yes. for the the fact that it says it carries its cyberpunk vision, a variation <laughs> right through to the end. Because like I said, Subaru Outbacks. <laughs> <laughs> So. I didn't notice those, but <laughs> I did. She was like, "Nope, didn't happen." <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't see it. It didn't happen. This is another. Uh, this is a pretty. This is pretty much the most negative one I could find uh, for the critics. One. It says the most inane and inept hoot fest, or for that <laughs> matter, hooter fest, mm. to hit the big screen since Showgirls. That's from Michael Dakina of the Movie Report. I would argue Showgirls much worse film. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, and if we're talking about like movies that may have been like uh, you know more off offensive to women, I would say Showgirls a hundred percent for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> well, kill Kim Williamson of Box Office Magazine. He was a little more favorable for it. Uh, the focus remains on Lee throughout and. Except for one flashback scene in which we see the young, compassionate woman she once was, she pretty much delivers. Boom. Very nice. So I'm gonna, Good. I'm gonna. This is my favorite part. I'm gonna read some quick audience for oh reviews here. <laughs> I hope These one of them's a review for like a hardware store. 
Oh, I tried to look for, uh, alas, none were found. Uh, <laughs> this one just says, Pamela Anderson's acting is mesmerizing, even though she doesn't quite play by the rules of good acting. The cyberpunk atmosphere <laughs> of the movie is very interesting. Well-built character, barbed wires, hot, deep, and feminine. Perfect B action movie with an interesting plot. Nice. Hot, deep, and feminine. <laughs> Um, (laughs) this review this is the only line in the review this is the entire review it says Mm -hmm. as for this movie Anderson is a beautiful woman wow (laughs) that's his review of the movie that's good that's deep uh, he's eyes work (laughs) it's true Um, these last two I'm not sure what they're trying to say but this one just says my favorite film is 1941 Citizen Kane hmm well, good for you, Alex K. <laughs> Don't know why that's a review of Barbed Wire, but good for you. And then the final audience review just is by uh, someone named Noir. Mm. And the review is as follows. <clears throat> Boops? That's it. <laughs> the entire review of Barbed Wire. Brilliant. With a question mark, too. It's, it's a qu- Boops? Interesting. They probably just saw the cover and were really high. <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. Is boob spelled B E W S? Uh, I wish, but no. Oh, darn. Mm-hmm. Uh, any any other ones there? No, I'm. I think I'm good. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we got that out of the way, and we've already kind of said you guys should watch this crazy, uh, crazy cuckoo bananas movie. See, I recommend uh, it on. Like I said. It's one of those movies that I think needed the time to, to, to develop to a point where mm-hmm. it can be appreciated. Also, I mean, if you were a child of the 90s and Pamela Anderson was a thing for you, you should definitely revisit this because it, it needs a second viewing. Because, a lot I, again, I, a lot of people might have given this a bit of a harsher go in the first because, uh, like Kat said, they would have just been like, oh yeah, Pam Anderson, blonde, you know, big boob bimbo, this movie's going to be terrible. And they're set that that it was going to be awful right and it may prepare you for the future as well that that happened last year well i mean it's off a few years but it may also prepare you for <laughs> right <that. laughs> agreed <laughs> watch out america barbed yes. wire is going to become your reality <laughs> right <laughs> but this is the p- point of the show where we uh you know plug stuff so I'll go to the, our guest first. Kat, first of all, mm. uh, thank you very, very much mm-hmm. for being on the show with us. Well, thank you for having me. So, Kat, uh, mm. that having been said, what do you have coming up that you'd like to promote? Or even, like, your Twitter page, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, well, um, let me just mention that I have a movie out in the theaters right now in the UK called Redcon 1, which is a zombie movie. Nice. And probably in depth and subtlety can compete with barbed wire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, if you check out Redcon One Film One, uh, no, sorry, Redcon One Film dot co dot uk, uh, you can find where the showings are, and hopefully it'll be released in the US at some point as well. Um, in order to keep up with everything I'm doing in terms of film and wrestling and stuff. Uh, it's my website and Twitter and Instagram is all Katarina's Infamy. And I will post updates on where I'm going to be resting on the independent scene and then obviously I'm with Impact. And um, yeah, and any projects, other projects that I might have coming up as well. Perfect. And that's every Thursday night. Yes, every Thursday night. And is it still on pop or what, what network yeah, is it on? It's on pop. Yeah, okay, Pop, Pop TV. TV. Yes. Mm-hmm. Cool. And if you're in Canada, I believe you can get it on the Fight Network. Uh, Nathan. Yes. Plugs. Oh well, <laughs> let me get my uh, my oh, friend here. Oh, fellow fellow countryman is about to yes, come in I'm, here. Yes, I'm just gonna let you know. Uh, ahead, this this little fella is from uh, uh, Great Britain, and um, oh. I think you might find him very delightful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Montrose Monkington the Third. Hello, it's your good friend Montrose Monkington the Third here, and I would like to take the time to thank uh, Brendan and Nathan for having me again uh, on their show, so that I might uh, promote my YouTube channel 
Montrose Milkington TV, uh, as well as my Facebook page, Montrose Milkington the Third Esquire and friends. Uh, as well, you may follow me on the Twitter devices uh, at Montrose the Third. That's the number three R D. But I simply must also thank them for having me on, so that I might meet this d- delightful uh, a countrywoman of mine, uh, a cat. Are you, are you, you're not a kitty cat, are you? Because I'm a monkey. Me? No, it's I, you. Well, I have claws. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> you you sound delightful, and I don't feel that I would want to get into a scuffle with you. Um, I have not yet uh, covered any of uh, your ev- events that you may have been involved with uh, back in the day. I do I do love watching the graps, uh, as it were, and, and talking about wrestling, uh, as well as uh, just any other forms of pop culture that might come across my way. But mostly it's the wrestling. Lovely. Yes, well, it's been it's been a delight to meet you, uh, Brendan. It's nice to see that your your hygiene is coming along quite nicely. Thank you. More later. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at WWTT Podcast. Same with on Instagram. Uh, search for us on Facebook. What were they thinking? Or were they thinking interactive? Is our Facebook group? We are also on. Uh, patreon just search what were they thinking we have different like donation tiers you can find there lots of cool things that you can sign up for we're also on Redbubble. we got merchandise on there and uh find us on all the podcatchers itunes slash apple podcast podbean spotify stitcher all that good stuff and i think that will do it That's about but it. i do need to give a quick hint for next for two weeks from today yes so our next movie we will be covering Here is your hint. There you go. (laughs) And as I hear a dog in the background somewhere. (laughs) Somewhere in the background, a dog is reacting. Um, Yeah, so that's uh, that's for two weeks from today. Nathan, did you... uh, Well, again, again, I want to say thank you, Kat. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Uh, for taking time out of your schedule. Thank you for putting up with our uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it's also, it's always nice to get somebody on who who will actually act as a defender for the movie that we're reviewing. Yeah. Yes. Well, I don't feel like, you know, it's necessary for me to talk about a film that I didn't like. I'd much prefer to... We do it you know, all the time. Talk about it with someone. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm just, I'm weird like that. No, you're just not a negative person. That's not something. Yes. That's not a bad. That's Correct. not a bad quality. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't take our misanthropic cues. Yeah. Um. But again, yeah. Like I said, thank you very much. It's awesome to take time yeah. out of your schedule to talk Thanks about. Me. It was fun. It was fun. To talk about a cinematic. Yes. Classic. Masterpiece. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but Nathan, did you have any questions? Well, I do, Brendan. Actually, um. I mean, in a movie that was that was clearly cribbed from uh, one of the greatest movies of all time, if not the greatest, mm-hmm. uh, to feature a delightful Canadian gal such as Pamela Anderson Lee, uh, in a movie where uh, they promised uh, cyberpunk but really just kind of delivered a gross Los Angeles, and in in a movie where where contact lenses can can block retinal scanners and Udo Kier uh, is a head mater D who is clearly running a bar but doesn't know how to run a bar I just gotta know when mm-hmm. they decided uh, to make this movie mm-hmm. what were they thinking it's time let's check our cue baby pair it with a couple brews baby we love your movies. We love the bad ones too. So we watch them all and pass their lessons on to you. Oh yeah. Banana 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 banana. Banana 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 banana.
Everything I learned from movies Helps to make life a little bit groovy With a one last plot holes and gratuitous boobies It's time to get busy With your friend Steven Izzy At eilfm.podbean.com Hey, I heard you like movies I heard you like to hustle. I heard you like podcasts. Well, guess what? There's a podcast for you out there called The Home Video Hustle. Damn right. Every Friday, we talk about whatever movie PJ picks out the bag. What does that mean? Every Wednesday on our YouTube page, I put a bunch of movies in a bag, and PJ picks one out at random. And then we just watch it. We talk about it for maybe like an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Whatever we feel like doing, wherever the conversation leads us. But do we actually talk about the movie? Most of the time. Ah. Tangents galore. Yes. So believe me, we may be a movie podcast, but it's not always about movies. We might talk about video games. Mm-hmm. Music. music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the big one, music. <laughs> uh, sometimes we might get a little bit of politicalness in there. Yes. Sometimes we may just, oh, we know what we like to do. We like to tell stories, PJ. Ah, yes. I am the master storyteller <laughs> yes. of the podcast realm. <laughs> Undefeated. So if you like to hear about movies, video games, whatever foolishness comes to our mind, the most random stuff you can think of, check out the Home Video Hustle. You can find us on the Stitchers, yes, the Google Play, yes, Apple Podcasts, what else? Podbean, what else? Podcast Addict, goddamn, all that. Ain't no reason you can't get your hustle on. We everywhere, worldwide, baby. Hustle, motherfucking hustle. Hey, we can't cuss in the promo, PJ. Ah, we gotta be family friendly. There may be podcasts out there that don't want his hair to say. Ah. Yeah, all that good fun stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> f- you. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, don't run the listeners away, Pete. Ah, I'm sorry. But this is going kind of long. Yes. So we'll end this and say, hey, check out the Home Video Hustle every Friday on all the various podcast outlets. Peace. Peace. Hey, everyone. It's Chris and Mike from The Recasting Couch the podcast where we take our favorite movies and discuss what they would be like with new actors in all the lead roles. Hey, Mike, tell them where they can find us on social media. You can find our website at therecastingcouch.com or on Twitter at RecastingPod. And of course, you can listen to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Android, or anywhere else you find your favorite podcasts. Yeah, if there's a service that's not posting our pod, you let us know and we will rectify that immediately. Damn right. (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't